You want to start just like PHP from the main, or the first script. If there is just one, maybe there will be several of them. So you don't know which one to start with. Or you want to start with the framework. You want to start by the business logic and the controller, or do you want to check at the template? So it's kind of an art. You, you don't know exactly what to look for, so you go into the code, start you know, looking at things, suddenly getting a track, and then following it. So here, we are, we are going, we're going to use tools that does that on a high scale. We cannot really use unit test to do the review. Why is it? Because unit test runs on specific predefined conditions. They're good, please do them, okay? It's not, it's completely complete, uh, complementary from what we're going to do. Do unit test, do a functional test, they have to be there. But unit test will say, okay, if I put A and B, then I expect C, okay? We're not going to do that, we're going to say, oh, what happens if something else comes in? If it's a letter, if it's a number, if it's an array or something like that. So unit test, of course, do not test unless it has been written. Dynamic analysis, is not fit here either because we want to broaden our, our search. So we need to explore the code, but we can only rely on the current existing code source. Okay? We're not going to try to invent things that do not exist yet or are ready to be removed, things like that. No, we see it, it's there, it has to be, uh, it has to be characterized. So how come, how come I'm, I'm talking to you about that? Well, I do have an, an engine, a static analysis engine, so I do w use one of them. Um, I, I mean, I use it on my own code, and believe me, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing more humbling than writing your own uh, static analyzer, okay? How many times do I, you know, write something and say, oh, this is stupid, I mean, double knot, who, s who does that? I mean, you could just cast it, and that would be enough, and then you write the little analysis to make sure that you can check that in every code, and then you check, so then your own code, like, oh, <laughs> I do that also. Okay, let's fix that before I commit. So it's, it happens all the time. Um, I'm also very sorry not to speak in Polish. I mean, and I'm the first one who actually did this uh, elephant as I already posted it. So the, the main uh, idea be behind static analysis is that uh, code source is actually an highly structured database. What do you call database? Usually it's a place where you put data, right? That's where you know exactly where data is and you know how to query it. Okay, so that's, that's a database, maybe no SQL or SQL or whatever. It's structured data. The problem with code source, it's, it's even worse. I mean, it's really, really highly uh, structured, but you have no idea how to query it. Okay, there are different ways, different approach to, to query the code, so you don't exactly know, and there are different approach to that, so that's a lot of, um, that lots of different tools we're going to see. Is it useful? This is a little breakdown of migration for PHP 7 to 7.1. Who's already running on PHP 7.1? Okay. Oh, okay. So we already prepared the migration or something, right? 7.2 maybe? Anyone on 7.2? No, it's kind of broken at the moment, so don't do that. Um, anyway, this is, um, this is a list of incompatibilities, seeing things that are no, not working in PHP 7.1 that were working in PHP 7, and you have new features, okay? And you have a list of different tools you can use to make your code migrate from, from the two versions, okay? Most of the time, the thing you know about your own code, so it's not a known code, of course, um, the thing you know about your code help you drive the, the migration. That's the most important. Static analysis is a good second. It's going to help you most of the time, or at least it's going to remove like 90% of the situations, okay? Otherwise, unit test or linting is going to help you a lot. Except, for example, linting never helps on new features. Things that has been upgraded that you can, you can do better in new versions, then usually it doesn't, help, it doesn't tell you anything. Okay? You have got to rely on static analysis to be able to look forward and get some information. So the first tool we're going to use for static analysis on PHP is the most obvious one. The only tool we have mentioned already not mine, of course. PHP itself, right? Anyone knows about linting? No? Please raise your hand if you know linting. One, two, ah, three, four. Okay, don't be shy, okay? I won't take pictures. Um, so linting, linting is the part of PHP that takes the, the text file that you call code source and turns it into words it, it can understand. 
Okay? It's really like looking in the dictionary and saying, okay, this is a word, the letters are, are in the right order, it can mean something or maybe several things, and I can do something with that. It's not even checking the grammar, okay? So it would be probably like me talking some Polish and you know, getting the words, but not in the right order. That would be ugly, right? So that's the linting part. The execution part will later take all those words and say, okay, if I put them next to each other, I can make an expression and do something with that or not. If I can't, I stop and I say, oh, fatal error. But here, linting is something you can do because on, this, on, the, on the code without running it, okay, just minus L. So um, that's the option. You, you only run that on, on, uh, on command line, PHP minus L, the name of the file, only the file. Sadly enough, it's a really old feature that has been there for since PHP 3, so it doesn't handle even recursive directories. You have to do that on your own, okay? And even when you're done with that, please use something, there's lots of them, but the one I currently use is PHP Parallel Lint, that does that on parallel processes, okay? Because otherwise that's going to take you like three, four minutes for a normal code base, and if you fit parallel that and you have several cores, that will take a few seconds, okay? So it's fast, it's efficient, it's of course with you, because, well, if you have to install PHP anyway at some point, then you will have it come online also. So, do that, and the advantage here is that we can, we can test it with many versions, okay? Here from PHP 5.5 to PHP 7.2. We don't really care if it's finished or not. We can prepare anything that has been already added to the new version, can be checked. I actually had the surprise, for example, um, I was checking my own code with PHP 7 and 7.1, and suddenly they decided to include a Boolean, for example, and string as a reserve name. Okay, so from one compilation of dev to the, de to, the no to the next one, like once a week, I do a recompile of PHP with the, with the original sources, suddenly, poof, some of my classes, which were actually called void and string, were, were completely uh, broken. So if we take the code source we're talking about at the moment, and we run it with lint, we get that. Um, I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but yeah, let me see on the other side while you're still thinking about what you can see here. Is it? No, that's something else. I don't know. Someone has a clue or a switch? So this is actually the result. Can you, this is actually the result if I run the linting with PHP 7 and 7.1 on the code base we have. What are you learning about that? This is uh, for, for once it's actually the full result. Everything is there. What are you learning from that? This is again the, any suggestion? No, just read on the code, anything that surprises you. <coughs> Go ahead, there's the easy ones. Hmm? Okay, so first we'll of course get the actual uh, feedback from PHP itself. We said it's static analysis of PHP is trying to make sure the code can run as best, as, po as good as possible. And there it's re realized that there are two default clauses in a switch. Okay, so until PHP 5, um, and until PHP 7, having several instances of default in a switch was fine. You can put two or three of them. Usually two is enough for, for the problem, and I haven't seen three of them. But two of is okay, PHP doesn't care because it will just take the first one he finds. Okay? So if there are several defaults in PHP 5, it will just ignore the next one and just take the first one and stops. And now in PHP 7, it can check that at compile time and it will tell you that it cannot have two of them inside the code. Okay? And that's now a fatal error, so you can check that before. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, it's actually an easy one to spot, right? And linting really gives you that, so at least it's an, uh, an important one. 
Um, two other things. I would like, yeah, two other things. You get some in extra information from the code, right? Come on, read the lines. How many files? 3,000. Yeah, around 3,000, something like that. We're not going to read that exact number. So the code base we're reading is actually a very large one. Okay? Over 3,000 files, almost. First, it runs in 16 seconds. So I don't know if you have larger code base than that, but you see 16 seconds is nothing. Okay? Even if you multiply that by, I don't know, 10 different PHP versions, you can check a number of them together all the time. And over 3,000 files, there's only one error. No? Doesn't surprise you yet? Okay. No, 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 no. It will actually give you a huge amount of them if there are any of them. And it will repeat them all the time. So um, be ready if you haven't never done that. Be ready to, re to see a number of them. That's actually one surprise. I mean, it's actually unusual unless, unless the team is actually checking the code with linting himself. At which case, it's actually weird to have only one error and have such an obvious one. So that's something I think we like to keep. Um, the other thing you can try is take a look at the name of the files. Does MPDF ring the bell to anyone? Who has ever used MPDF? One, two, oh yeah, the older guy, right? Yeah, okay, so. Hmm? Oh yeah, really old. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them, so <laughs> I know about that. So the second surprise is this one. No syntax error found. So on 771, they have one, and it's a an really old class. And probably MPDF is a class from someone else. I mean, it's, it's an actual open source project. Again, the two or three old guys in the room can tell you that um, we've been using that since year 2000. The project, I think, is dead. I'm not sure. I have to check. But MPDF has been around for a long time and it's probably not updated anymore. So it probably carries things that do not compile with newer version. And PHP 7 is definitely going to be uh, breaking on them. Is this result OK or not? Does it, again, strike you? You are not struck by the fact that there's just only one error. But now, we have not at all. So over, how say, seven versions? They had one single stupid error. Nothing else? Ah. <laughs> so the yeah should be, oh, yeah, there's something that weird, OK? And it's fine, OK? There will be a. Why is it that PHP 7.2 doesn't have any problem, OK? Um, I, think, I think currently it's broken. There are a number of things that I find really weird. Um, I think I managed to redefine a number of pre-existing PHP uh, constants in, when using 7.2. Okay. So the code is dev, okay? It's, it's something that's being worked on. They maybe have broken something. That's fine. And they maybe have broken the, the switch test, okay? Um, no, I just need the laser, actually. So that will be sufficient. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, when you want to try linting, First, focus only on middle versions, okay? So, <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's trying to uh, back. Okay, when you're linting like that, focus on PHP middle version. So, 5.6, 5.5, 5.6, 7.7.1, 7.2. That's all, okay? Mi minor version is probably overkill. It happens once in a while you will find a bug introduced between a minor version and the next. That's going to be really unusual. Okay? There's no need for you to, to test 133 versions from 5.3 to 7.2 because most probably at the t each time you'll get just the same result. Okay? So just keep up with the latest version inside the middle version and that will be sufficient. Okay? And that's, you see, a uh, mere two or three minutes of work on the machine and then you get a result anytime you want you find an error, go on that. And I actually want you to, to read that. Those are various projects, and this is the number of error based on the middle versions of uh, PHP. Okay? So on the first one, and I have to find, where's the ladder? Is that it? Yeah. This one here, what does it look like? 
it looks like 5.2 is getting a lot of parse error and it's getting better and better with the versions and then it's just flat zero. So this is typical of new code. Okay? What happens with new code? Well, you get the newest PHP version and then you make sure everything runs and the code, is small, the code base is small, so you just keep on checking all the sources all the time and you don't really care about backward incompatibility. And especially most of the time when you start, you want to use the brand new features that you've been uh, denied using for, uh, b until now. So that's really typical of the new. On the other hand here, you've got a typical old project. I'm pretty sure MPDF is in that place, okay? Which means that in 5.2 it was still being worked on, so no single error. And then at some point they decided to stop and the code is degrading progressively, okay? It's including more and more errors with the number of versions. And that's kind of normal, okay? PHP is abandoning th things, making them obsolete, and it's actually moving to other uh, ways of doing things. So more and more is going, going up. Now, if we have that new code, that old code, what is that? Middle age. Middle <laughs> yeah, you like compromise, you must be Dutch, something like that. I'm living there, so I know how they work. Um, this is actually company work. This is usually enterprise work, because when you start, you get the same, f the, the same initial work, the same initial um, you know, profile. When you start, you only ask for the newest version, because you don't want to start with a you know, lot of you know, back, uh, backlog. So you start with the current version, make sure it works very fine. And your hoster is very happy to do that for you also. But then the business say, okay, now we have chosen stuff. We want to make sure it works on those versions and we don't want to wander uh, around with new versions. So that usually means that when the new version comes up, well, you know you have to stick with the current architecture, which has been certified, which had a lot of trust, and no one wants to move to new versions without fear. So suddenly you're stuck there and you can see newer versions getting lots and lots of new parse errors and you cannot move there, okay? So that's really typical. At least I think that um, when, you're, when you're a company, like, uh, company, at least try to keep that profile, making sure that the newest version keeps compiling, okay? Backward is not, not always important, but at least try to check that uh, the newer version is still st compiling. Last, what is that? That's bad code, yeah, <laughs> exactly, good. You have, you, have you ever seen any of it? <laughs> yeah, that's stupid code. There's a bunch of files that keep consistently failing across any versions. Please come in, there's room, there's room for everyone. Okay, that's bad code, that's unchecked code, maybe I call that stupid code, but that's kind of funny. Sometimes you realize that there are like four or five files and that may be a very good number, right? Out of 3,000 of them, we, we may expect to have, I don't know, maybe five, 10 of them that could consistently fade compiling, so not being used. And then you ask, but why are we writing tests for this class? It's not even compiling, okay? So that, that's really bad, okay? That's typical of the age of the project, but that's really bad, please do that. Just, just run, run the linting and you'll get a lot of interesting feedback. Um, here is the feedback we, we actually collected just by running the linting, okay? Uh, it's not compatible from 7 and 1, which I still, f as early as we are, um, I think it's kind of weird. It's compatible across a wide range of, of versions. That's interesting to understand. It uses PDF, okay? And PDF apparently produce PDF files. Um, that's probably more the business logic, okay? We, we still don't know what this application is doing, but if they're using this class, they probably are producing PDF files. What for? We still don't know. Um, and they're using, it's a very large code, ba code base. So first thing, we know it compiles. Second thing we're going to take a look at is metrics. Anyone use metrics up to, up to now? One? Yeah, usually not, not too many. I actually don't like that either, but okay. Anyway, so metrics. Metrics are a way to measure the code, okay? You cannot just say this code is 3,000 files because, well, that doesn't really help. Lines of codes may help also, but there are, lot, there are some theoretical uh, values, cyclomatic complexity, uh, maintenance index, stuff like that. They're interesting because they give you a global overview of the, the application. So two tools, all the tools will be listed in the last slide and the slide will be published. So 
If you want to keep the name, it's okay. If you forget, that will be available later. Um, here is the, one of the granddaddy of the static analyzer, uh, PHP lock lines of code, which actually gives you a full list of things. There's a, a second screen full of uh, information. I just give you the first uh, screen of them. What, what is interesting? What is interesting? What do you find interesting there? Just give me a few opinions. It is the same project. Why do you ask? The number of files and the number of <laughs> yes. Um, I actually have, um, I think I have one explanation, which is that PHP, li uh, PHP lock counts all the files and only parses the PHP ones. So here you have the count of the PHP files, so say 3,000, and a number of other files. Okay? So that probably leads us to think that there is a lot of media with the, around, okay, because classically you will get CSS, JavaScript, templates will be PHP code, so I would say images and maybe a few PDF that are already done. So that's the explanation of why we have suddenly a lot more files than, than we have uh, until now. It also leads you to understand that um, those tools give you a value for something and it's not always the same definition for all of them. Okay, we're going to see that in a few seconds again. But that's a good one. That's an interesting one. What else? Things that you like, things that you don't like. You can see lines of code, about a million lines of code. So again, that's very large. We, don't, we have a lot of files, and probably some of them are pretty large, because that's a good, uh, good average. Uh, comments, 30% of the code is comment. So first good news, we have comments. Second bad news, we have too much comment. I mean, how long? Can you read a quarter million of lines of code? You expect, do you, do you think that the developer actually wrote that much? So um, I kind of expect that here a good, a good a sizable amount of, uh, of those comments are going to be PHP doc, because that usually leads to a lot of lines, okay? Which means that we have probably some read really do really documentation in the code. Again, no check yet, but that's an idea. Other things, to have so much uh, comments, you may have license files. So license comments, you know, at the beginning of the file, they say, okay, this is GPL. So maybe the code here could be open source. Okay, available to something to, to everyone to see, not just internal enterprise. Um, last thing, if you remove the too large amount, then you may have really code uh, in the comments inside. So there's room for, for hope for that. Otherwise, other suggestions, things that you like, don't like? No? Yes, comments are important. Here we see that there are, and um, we, we have, it's still very broad. This is the problem with metrics, right? You have a, a general measure of something. You don't know exactly what's inside. We would like to see that. With 30%, we know that docs are uh, going to be there. We don't know exactly where, um, if the comments, like those important comments inside the, um, inside the code are going to be there. But there's room for it. That's, all, that's the only thing we have. Is that... The, Yeah, depending on the type, yeah. It could filter, it could give us more insight on, yeah, is it one-liner, is it, uh, well, well, there are three styles, so yes, you're right, that could be, a, that could be an interesting uh, information. We don't have it he here, but that could be interesting. Um, there's 91% of the code which is class, so this is apparently modern OP uh, code. There's, uh, let's say, a big percent of functions, and there's the last 8% which are global code, That's 15,000 lines that just lies somewhere at the top of the, of the, um, yeah, you're still here. That's, that's still 15,000 lines that just, you know, how much do you need? You need auto load, you need a few init set at the beginning, a few includes, and then that's all, right? And here there's 15,000 of them. So they actually spend a lot of time just, you know, 
including the files or just finding the file at the right place? That looks weird. The other thing, maximum class complexity, a thousand. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay, usually they say something around 10 is good. We have 1,000. That means that we have at least one class that's really big and that's doing a lot of work. What kind of class could be so central and doing so much work at the same time? You know the syndrome of the God object? You know, the class that you threw everything at? Okay, you don't know what to do. Okay, you have it, it's a global, you send it to it. Okay, we, we start smelling it. Okay, maybe there's a framework, could be interesting to spot. Because frameworks, at least the old ones, tend to have that kind of uh, approach, right? They, you implement something and then you, well, you, call, you create an object and then you call it all the time. So maybe there's a framework. Again, maximum me method complexity 300, that's large. So it means that's really a one class that's big and that probably has several of those really complex methods. So let's go into more details. PHP doc is interesting. PHP metrics has a lot more detail for you. And here is, well, there are, there are several of them. First is graphic, it has colors, so don't show your boss the previous one, show them that, okay? They like it a lot better. Do we find the same results than the previous one? Okay, remember that measures, measures they tell you the same values, but they're not the same calculated. On the, on the right side, you can see there is, there is our big, huge object, right? If the machine stays, yeah. This one, except now the complexity, the cyclomatic complexity is 600. There are different ways to calculate the cyclomatic complexity, okay? Probably the two of them agrees that one class has a huge amount of cyclomatic complexity. The actual number is not the most important one, okay? So don't be surprised, but when you, can, when you check, this one and the previous one are the same, so at least that drives you to the most complex class easily. You can see also others. We mentioned that there is one that has a huge uh, complexity. There are some others, okay, that are kind of different. Um, so remember, we've seen MPDF. Again, for those of you who know, MPDF is a fairly large class that provides PDF. So it's kind of a complex calculation. It ends up with some high complexity, chromatic complexity. This, I don't know which one of them is the MPDF, probably one of those I1. It also means that we have other things that look like PDF. I mean, like MPDF. There are other libraries that are being included that have cyclomatic complexity. And we end up with this huge amount of small classes with low lines of codes and low cyclomatic complexity. What kind of approach is that? That's the classic framework approach, right? The framework is maybe one, hopefully several classes, huge that does a lot of things, and you end up just writing small components, small templates, small components. So there may be probably two teams in the, in the current code, one writing the business logic somewhere here, small components, and others writing really complex stuff in, uh, in libraries that are common and being re reused, okay? We still haven't checked too many too deep into the code. We already have an, a good idea. Yes. The cyclomatic complexity? I don't think so. Uh, cyclomatic complexity doesn't uh, rely on the presentation. It relies on the number of possibilities that the, the, the methods, let's say, is able to handle. So if the methods is only... No, it's not readability. There's no um, things like the Fleischer rem rem readability on text, you know, that when they count the number of syllabus and the number of words inside a, a sentence, there's nothing like that for code, okay? So it's more, how, how complex is the code? If you have like three or four nested uh, if inside each other, you end up with like 16 easily because it will, t it will be able to handle 16 different cases at one, uh, one place, okay? And then it's like extrapolated for larger classes, okay? Uh, the, other, the other option, so if you don't see it here, you, you see it on this one. We have this big class, which is, which is our uh, high complexity. And you, s you have, you know, like islands of smaller libraries that are around. And then suddenly everything shrinks and we have got this huge amount of small classes. Probably a framework. Yeah. 
uh, it's the line without the comments. So it's both complex and big, and the other ones may be very complex and small, like one, one method classes. Another part of the complexity is that. So first, we know that it's a large uh, code base. So of course, you end up with a lot of classes, which is good for me, because then you cannot read the name of the classes at that point of the pr presentation. Of course, if you take PHP uh, metrics, you can actually over your mouse over different over the, the classes name or over the links and see which parts of the classes are related. This presentation is the dependencies. Which classes depends or calls which other class. Okay? Remember we said we have one very big class. Now we know that there are also a number of classes that are concentrating a large number of calls. If you see this kind of tree, it goes there, and they are like, for example, all those classes there, apparently they tend to send things somewhere here. So not only we have big classes, but there's also concentrating all the call to only one, or I would say a few ones, just as we had the, uh, the intuition until now, okay? The framework would be here, and let's say MPDF or a number of others, um, smaller libraries are around, okay? So we have the framework, a number of smaller specialized libraries, and a huge amount of little components. Kind of, you know, break into places, right? Anyway, still big, still, we are, we, I don't give you too many details yet, but we get this whole impression from the global point of view. We want to go into more details now because metrics are interesting to give you a global mark. What I like is when the mach machine is able to point you inside the code, tells you there, for that line, there is this problem that I detected. I may be right, I may be wrong, but at least I can send you exactly in the code to, for you to take a look at, and not just say, okay, this is a huge class, just refactor it. It's kind of an easy one. So we're going to set an automated code review. Automated code review really goes into the script and, and, and spot everything. Um, the first one that really break the um, experimental, um, okay, uh, well, 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 went into public, were uh, the one that helped for migration. Okay, PHP 7CC is the one I'm going to show you here. PHP 7CC um, is PHP 7 compatibility check. Okay, you give it the whole code and it will scan it and give you some results. There's too many results. Unlike, unlike the, um, the PHP linting, here we have 140 feedback. So I cannot, of course, feed, uh, put everything inside the, the screen. I make a selection of them. That's the best one. Lots of them are repeated, so it's one problem that's actually all the, all, all the time all the same. What is interesting here? Each time, well, there's how many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six of them. Each time you have the file where it happens, you have the actual full path. There is even the line, okay? Actually, the line. There is the explanation pitch before a uh, constructor are um, deprecated, and there's actually the, the code that explains why it's, uh, it's deprecated, okay? So this problem in particular, uh, in PHP 7, we, we are deprecate, deprecating the old style, PHP 4 style, okay? So when the, the method has the name of the class, and the class has no underscore underscore construct method, and the class is not in a namespace, and a few other situations, then PHP will actually fall back and use that method with the same name of the class to, to be the constructor, okay? So if you're still using PHP 4 classes, you will eat that a lot. And that's exactly the case here for MPDF, which has been around since PHP 4. So yes, we get the feedback on something that we, can we could expect since the beginning of uh, testing with, with linting. So that's, yeah, very typical and kind of expected for MPDF. Um, that's the only one I selected. Anything else? First, you can understand that we were linting. So PHP 7 and PHP 5 accept every code you see here. It can lint it. It can say, oh, I can do something with that, except it's not going to run that. So for example, um, checking does MySQL connect is available, will, not, will be linted, but not checked. Okay. 
Because PHP will say, oh, yeah, I recognize MySQL Connect is built like a function call. There's the parentheses, there are the parameters. That's fine. I just don't check that MySQL Connect does exist. In PHP 7, the extension called MySQL, the one that was connecting to MySQL 3, is not by default in the code anymore. Okay? So PHP will say, that's something I can recognize. When it runs, it says, yeah, but MySQL Connect, I don't know. It will stop. Okay? Which, again, gives us another information that's linked to the other one. This is PHP code, PHP 4 code, and this is PHP 4 code again. Meaning that the application we have here probably started with PHP 4. So it's an old one. We know it's a big one, and it's an old one. Usually it's related. <laughs> but, um, does this one surprise you? Split? Yeah, it's difficult to understand where the split is coming from because there's no prefix, right? MySQL Connect, it's easy. It's from MySQL, right? It would be PG Connect, you understand it's Postgres. It would be whatever database underscore connect, you could guess it from the prefix. But here there's no prefix, where is that from? It's one of the standard library, well, it's not standard anymore, though um, it's not exactly that. It's not the standard as it's called, it's from the uh, POSIX library, okay? One of the really first PHP 2 extension was actually direct system calls using the POSIX system. And the, so at that time, there was no plans to actually make PHP so big, so initially it was just, you know, relating, reusing the name from the system as the name for the, um, for the function. And of course, no prefix yet, no namespaces, no whatever. So this one comes from um, Reposix. Several of them were inside with no prefix and, uh, and got around, again, uh, were removed. Again, this is PHP 5 code. This was for there for a long time, and it's now disappears in PHP 7. So we can start to understand that part of the code lint, but doesn't work in 7. So maybe, maybe they try to, you know, walk on two feet. I have code that works on 5 and 7, and they haven't cleaned everything yet. Any other things you can, you can guess from uh, what you read here? Maybe not directly to related to migration? No? Maybe later when you collect more hints, then you can start falling back on them. Okay, whatever. So, migration. Um, PHP 7cc works with regex. So I mentioned that the code source is a big mess of text, big mass of text, mess also sometimes. Um, but it doesn't understand that a number of strings are actually words for PHP or not. Okay, there's no semantic. Regex do not understand semantic. It just say, okay, there's a bunch of letters next to each other. That's the one I understand. Now, if you want to use um, PHP and understand the actual words in the, inside the language, you have to use the tokenizer. So who has ever used the tokenizer here? Okay. Okay, <clears throat> let me rephrase that. Who has used PHP? Okay, so you've been using the tokenizer all the way long. The tokenizer, as I said, is that, that is a, the part of PHP that turns the text into tokens, and then the tokens are executed later. Okay? The tokenizer is, is something you, you use by default. Anytime you run PHP, there's the tokenizer. And if you enable it in your PHP binary, you can actually have access to extra function, token get all, which actually gives you all the tokens in a huge amount, a huge array. <laughs> Don't read that, that's ugly. Um, and there's another one for the name. So, the basic idea about uh, a static analyzer is that, yeah, we use all the tokenizer one way or another. We start from the code, run it into the tokenizer, and then rebuild the tokens, like, you know, bricks for a house. You rebuild that into something that makes sense, because it's too, lo too big to, uh, to be an array and to select things into that array. We try to build that something into something that's more usable. Usually it goes into a database, or it just stays in memory. PHP 7cc, for example, runs very fast, so it just stays in memory for, for speed's sake. And then you have to cross that with rules. 
because once you know exactly where, how is structured the, the, the sentences in the book, okay, then, well, you, know, you have to look for things you know that are going to be problematic. Okay. There are many different set of rules that maybe you own. There may be, for example, calisthenics. Well, I don't know this one. I cannot pronounce that. Um, but that's, an, uh, for example, a set of rules for, uh, for writing good uh, oriented, object oriented code that applies to PHP and not only to PHP. Uh, there are also things about performance, just clear PHP, things like that. You cross the database and the rules and you get a report. Um, to give you an idea how does an, uh, um, the internal representation works, here is a very simple PHP script. You can see creation of a class with a very simple method and then uh, just call it and, and, and do some process. This is how it looks when you run that uh, with the AST. So you start with the PHP itself, there is the sequence, and below you get all the details. The new here and the class here can be added, can, can be related with the definition. Okay? So the AST gets all the different tokens next to each other, and then later it says, oh, but I understand that this, def this uh, instantiation is related to this class. Meaning that later, when we reach the foo bar, the call for, um, for the method, then we know that we can start from there, go here, and find the definition. So the AST is really powerful whenever you have to look for definitions, maybe for classes, methods, functions, constants, variables, things like that. You know how to find your way inside the maze of the code. Okay? Um, the thing that it doesn't have, usually, is the order. It's not exactly true, but most of the time the AST doesn't care about the order. So the order of execution we have here, so the class first and then the instantiation, is actually completely broken over there. If you want to build your own AST because you've, you've, you, you feel that there's something you want to look for into your code and you don't exactly know, there are ways to do it. So they are all different again, just like for metrics, they have the same definitions, different uh, implementation. Um, you can use one, if you're in stuck in PHP 5, there is an AST for PHP 5. The real AST that's really consistent starts with PHP 7. Okay? PHP 7 has an extension for that, so it's really fast, it's efficient, it's updated by the guy who actually does the, the internal uh, engine, who actually built the AST inside the code. And this is also one of the reasons we got some of the uh, breaking backward incompatibilities between 5 and 7, because some variables had to be reorganized to be uh, consistent with uh, the AST. On the other hand, and when you don't like that, well, for example, Exacat has its own AST in the graph database. Uh, PHP Storm has its own AST that's built for an IDE, so it's really fast. Okay? There are different approaches and different uh, interesting results. The AST itself, um, when you take a piece of code, well, first it generates a huge amount of tokens. Um, most of the time, everything about common space and documentations are removed completely. That's about a third of a whole script. So if you have a million lines of uh, tokens, not lines of code, but if you have a million tokens inside a script, you have a third of them that will just be removed because useless. Maybe they will interest like code sniffer, so you can make sure good convention, but that's all. Then all the delimiters are also removed, and that's another third of your tokens. So out of a million line of code, of a million tokens, sorry, you end up usually with a third of them that are actually important and useful. Okay, so not not too very not uh, not too much of the code is actually reused. I'm sorry for the flickering. I don't know what to do for that. And that was bad <laughs> because this is the moment where it actually is a transition to something that you want to see. Yes. So I used here fan. PHP analyzer, and it actually got, it's, um, it's the one started by Erasmus, so himself. Um, it was initially done for migration, so along with PHP 7cc or, 7 or PHP 7 more, then it was trying to help people migrate and spot easy problems from PHP 5 to PHP 7. After that, it actually went on and actually covered a large number of other issues. And here on this 3,000 uh, file uh, project, I got 5,000 uh, errors. Okay? Um, of course, it's way too long for you to read, so I actually broken them by 
um, by problems, and here is a few of them, so I'm going to let you read that. Um, what was the next thing I wanted to mention? Oh yeah, 36 types, but uh, I think FAN is, is covering at least 100 of different types of errors. And most of the time, FAN gives you a huge amount of error. It's more like 30 error by file as an average than, than two. So that's something, of course, if you haven't used a static analyzer or a FAN, you don't know yet. But this one is actually giving a very low number of errors. What is interesting? Why, anything that strikes you here? Note that I'm not giving you much documentation at that point, right? You will find, as usual, um, the name of the file and the line number. So everything is pinpointed in the code. If you, well, if you add the code under, under your ID, then you could actually find this file, the line code, and understand the problem here. Okay? Second thing is, there is a, a small identifier for the name of the problem, and then there's also some short documentation. Really short, it's one liner, right? Maybe it's a little larger when they tell you that one, one function is called, but then it's, uh, it's problematic with, um, with the definition. So what do you get here? Anything you can build on what we have seen up, up to now? Anything that's surprising? Anything? No? Who? When is it possible that uh, this is undeclared? Is it, is it possible? Is there an object where you have no this? No one used this technique? No? Okay. Um, it's classic of an old style of uh, templating system where the, the templating it will actually get the name of the file it has to include and include the file to render the template. And the template itself is written as an object, but it's included at the last moment. So it's a separate file, and all the these call are in the global place, but later it will be actually included dynamically and run inside the object. So this is a templating system. And that's also explain why we have so many call of them, because probably all the templates are written with that, and there's usually a lot of templates. Okay. So it's probably a false positive here. What else do we see? We see here that there is a problem between uh, this method, which expects to have an array on null, and actually something else is provided. Which means either they're using type hint, scalar type hint, because array or null is scalar type hint, or it's using PHP doc. Which one of you do you think it is the case? PHP doc, why? Because otherwise it wouldn't compile with previous versions of PHP, right? So we have PHP doc. Remember about that our uh, initial uh, comment? We have lots of comments. There is PHP doc. Here it is, and that's a problem. So we have a problem in the doc. Good information. We have some documentation. Um, what else? HTML purifier, HTML markdown, memcache, all of them are big classes and old libraries. Again, gives us some more insight on uh, what is it, what's uh, inside this code. Um, what else before we go on? Oh, yeah, redefine functions. Redefine function. How come this function t and get weak are so many times redefined? Who needs them? T function. You, you should know that there's a t function. It's a small name. It's really fast. Probably because oh, I have to finish. Um, probably okay. Let's uh, okay. Let's finish that. Um, what happens is sometimes the functions are inside a larger, you know, library. They, they put all the five or maybe 50 or 60 different functions we have in one place, and they include it. But at some point for performances review, they have one function call, 
and they don't need the 59 others. So to avoid that, they just duplicate the code and put it into the place they need it for speed uh, ex execution. So here it's a speed concern. Oh, I have like 10 minutes, right? So let's not go too fast. Um, other ways to uh, analyze the code, we've seen the AST, which looks like that. Usually we add the flow control diagram, the flow control graph. So as I mentioned, initially the AST doesn't care, but that's, that's another overlaying graph. And we just now follow the code and say, okay, if we follow one branch, then it goes this way and ex execute that. And that will allow us to find that A3 is only defined in one branch and not on the other one. Okay. The other approach we have is the data dependency graph, where we try to read the code by looking at when the variable is actually created and used, I mean, uh, is created and manipulated. So here we can follow different uh, graphs, and we see that A3, it's only happening when X is under 10. Okay. Meaning that at the end, if A is important at some point, that may be a condition that has been uh, already uh, expressed before. All the links, if you see, are depends on, meaning that when we reach that, to be able to use that, we need to depend on the creation of X first, which is done all the time, that's fine. Some of the lines are depends on, some of the lines are depends on not. The not is after, it depends on the contrary of that condition, we've seen that this branch depends on the condition, this branch depends on the contrary of the condition. Okay? So that, that allows us to express the things, and later we can actually stack up all those conditions and say this is not possible because we, say we checked X first, and then later we check for the contrary, and that branch will never happen. So lots of interesting there. So if we want to do more on the static analysis on PHP, um, one thing that I really like is the inventories. So in Exacat, we have something called the App Info, which is like PHP Info for PHP features. That's really interesting to, um, to see when you don't know the code. Here are all the different uh, thematics that are covered. And for example, if we take a look at PHP itself, we see all those features. So the one, of course, with the empty square means it's not used. So they are not using any short tags, which is good because the feature is abandoned later. They're using a lot of those um, no scream operator, uh, alternative syntax. Alternative syntax is usually used inside a template. And we mentioned that we, we have already spotted that they use a templating system. I don't know which one, but um, they use autoload, which is interesting. So it's kind of modern and probably doesn't go back below uh, PHP 5.2. Um, they use file upload. We have seen that they're, they're producing PHP uh, PDF files, but they also accept upcoming files. So that helps us understand uh, what's happening. Functions, functions are interesting also. Uh, remember, we, ha we, had, uh, we wondered why the fan was reporting that we had troubles with the scalar. Well, they are not using any type int of any kind. So we have the confirmation here that uh, it's not tested. Um, they're still using function get arg, and remember that in PHP 5.5 we have the introduction of the ellipsis. The ellipsis is a new feature that will break compatibility with older version, but they just stick on PHP function get arg. Function get arg is fairly advanced. Fairly, it's not so difficult to handle, but usually people don't use that too much in PHP, you know, different signature for the same method. So um, first, that means that they used that before, maybe in PHP 5.4 or 5.2, but they kept using this old feature for backward, uh, for backward compatibility. That seems to be something really important. Um, okay, there are condition functions or things that are, call that are uh, created upon condition, and they have dynamic function calls also. So interesting. That that goes for all the different aspects of PHP features. So you can learn um, what kind of feature they use, what they don't use, and you can understand how advanced is the actual team um, in, terms of, um, in terms of feature usage. Finally, hmm, yeah. Okay, uh, more analysis on that. Um, there are, okay, there are lots of tools that give you um, lots of information about, uh, that goes more into uh, PHP features. So, uh, it, for example, this is one of the feature of PHP. When you started in PHP 5.3, you could use dear name. There was no underscore underscore dear underscore underscore. 
and it kept, they kept using that. Okay, again, all code still being ported until PHP 7.2. Still works, but it really looks like it's been started a long time ago. On Exacat, we have 300 analyses. And here you have a little a breakdown okay, of a various list of uh, problems. And here is the frequency of uh, the problem, the, the frequency of occurrence of the problem in various projects. So for example, throwing, throwing uh, uh, an exception inside the destruct, which probably is going to, to crash your PHP and PHP 7, happens very, very infrequently. And here in the project, they don't use it at all. So at least it's under control. As you can see, lots of those are very little usage for there are only one not, not. I don't know who, wh where this uh, convention is coming from, but in PHP we can have the Boolean type casting, so please use that. But um, lots of um, templating systems actually use not, not to make sure that something is a Boolean. Okay, the first not makes the Boolean, the second one actually drives back the value to the actual uh, value. So probably someone who doesn't know how to handle PHP. And for example, use this parentheses, like 67%, they are also using those problems all the time. So there's interesting feedback on that. I really have to stop. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, I will just um, jump on that. Everything will be in the things. I will just finish on that. We've checked the code. We've checked how it works. We've checked the versions. The only thing we don't know yet is what does it do? Where in the code are we going to understand what this code is doing? Any idea? Is it because they're using esterpos or esterpos compare? Diarico? No, that's not the place where the, the business logic appears, right? Where do we have the business logic appearing in a code that's basically very constrained in terms of techniques? That appears in the naming. Everything you name, variable, function, constant, whatever, that will probably bear, carry your meaning, okay? So let's take a look, for example, at errors. Does that help us? Here are the error messages that is being found in the code when they threw uh, an exception or when they um, actually die or exit with a name. Does that help us? User ID must be supplied, user denied, conversation not found. All those are technical stuff. So the code we have here do not bear, the error and never carries any uh, business logic. So maybe we can take a look at classes names. Here you have a selection of all the classes. They are ordered by, by their most important ones, by their uh, numbers. So for example, default controller, which carries a lot of business logic, controller as usual, actually 22 of them. Can we get any information from that? Which is the framework we, um, we are seeing there? Yeah. So there's a framework. The name was appearing in different. Um, Okay, so the code generator, generator. I'm not a specialist of Wii framework, okay? So I still expected that the default controller would be the default one. Like when they don't know what happens, then it falls back on this one and they put other names, okay? So we know here there are controllers, but the name of the, the actual business logic is somewhere else. But we start seeing there student attendance, save searches. So sometimes they have those controllers with actual names, elective controllers, SMS settings. Can you start understanding what they're doing? Any suggestion? Come on. CK Editor, I like this one because it's actually a technical problem and it's there twice. PDF, there are, we've seen PDF, there was MPDF, there's actually another five other classes that can be used as PDF. Default controller is a funny one. There is a world class for logo, but there's also at employees, attendees. Um, okay, I'm going to jump on that because that's the end. Um, the list of all the analyzer we've seen together is here. So if you want to run them, they're all open source. If you want more or the one you have seen here are not satisfactory, 
there are 70 of them in this, uh, in, in this list. Okay? So you will probably find one that interests you. Okay? And the finally, <coughs> like I give you the name. This is called Open School. That could be guessed from the variable and the control. Uh, not from the variable. The variable actually never carried any content from a school meaning. But that, what, uh, that could be guessed from the names of the controllers and the classes. Okay? It handles uh, a school. So all the, uh, all the aspects for students, the classes, the teachers, and the employees, so lots of different uh, aspects, very management style. It's actually provided as open source, and they've been doing that since 2009. So that explains why it's been checked from PHP 5.3, and maybe even before, and they still keep on checking the versions all the time. Okay? So at least they are, they are up to par. I mentioned that the for fan had very little result. They actually, at the root of the, the application, they have a dot fan, which configures fan for the execution. So that makes, again, sense. They had very little result from fan because they're testing it all the time. It's an open source co code, but it's not on GitHub. They release it once in a while. So this has strictly no unit test. Probably we don't see them because they are not published, OK? So don't be surprised if the, uh, an open source code has no unit test. Maybe it's on purpose. What I like also, because it didn't, that's the first, um, I've, I've made several uh, versions of this uh, talk, so testing different tool. Can you guess the country of origin of this application? Most of the time it happens. You know where it has been actually uh, written. But we had no clue here. So obviously, they're doing a good work on checking the code and making it as generic as possible. Probably we could take a look at that. So I would rank that as fairly high quality, because obviously, there are the processes to check the code and make it uh, better and uh, reusable for the future. OK? Thank you. I will be here for the whole day. So um, if you have extra questions or things that I've, I'm sorry, went uh, too, far, too fast on, then I will be able to, uh, to explain that to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>